spiritual healing, you can't really heal the spirit. The spirit isn't sick. But spiritual healing means using the energies from the spiritual level, which is the next dimension, which is the fourth, fifth, sixth, seventh dimension. Um, it's a matter of, of the, the healer or the person myself being a channel for that healing. Um, so I'm very aware that I have to um, meditate before a healing to open up all my channels, particularly the crown chakra, and have all my energies flowing so that I can be used as a healing channel. Um, also, spiritual healing, um, I feel, is different from psychic healing um, in the fact that there's a lot more uh, philosophy involved. So even though I may do hands-on healing, which in actual fact anyone can do, it's like in the olden or back in biblical times or even in church where we pray for healing. And so anyone can actually put their hands on somebody else and pray for a healing. Um, the spiritual healing that I deal with, the way it's different from psychic healing, is the, the philosophy that's involved. There are a lot of psychic people who aren't spiritual. And I guess there are spiritual people who aren't psychic. Um, when you develop your spiritual um, talents, I suppose, you find that you are becoming more psychic or clairvoyant. And it's because the spiritual center, the third eye center, once that's cleared and opened and you're channeling, you can't help but see what perhaps somebody with their, just their physical eyes cannot see. I certainly found that with myself. I knew that when I was a very young girl that, uh, you know, everyone used to kid around, oh, you're a bit psychic. And I used to have, you know, dreams, that, et cetera, that came true, but didn't think any more about developing it. But when I studied meditation and made the decision that I was going to work as a spiritual worker, I certainly found that I started becoming aware and seeing um, different things that, that I was never aware of before. I became aware of presence, um, spiritual energy around me, uh, guidance. I've actually seen an angel, but I didn't see it with my, with my um, physical eyes. So you, you just start to become more aware of other things as, as well that are actually not of this dimension, this third dimension. There was really no, no faith need, but a belief um, that you had these abilities and invoke them into you. And you, you feel the energy. You actually can see, if you can see auras, you can see the energy flowing from the fingers. And your uh, auric field gets bigger and brighter. And so if you take um, auric photographs, you can actually see that this energy is there and the same energy um, that you can see in Reiki. Well, my theory is that all diseases come from our emotions, our reaction to specific things, our, our perception of what has happened to us. And I think you could basically say, it extends to say, comes from error in thinking. And men don't cry. Women have to be strong as well. And they suppress things. And so this error in thinking that creates a reaction, if people communicated, if people weren't uh, under all the social stresses that they're under, we wouldn't have these errors in thinking. And that's what the light does. It digs out and regurgitates them. Often after a white light um, healing, people say, I realize what I was doing. So that's quite significant for all forms of depression or feeling out of sorts. The way that most people think it's going to help them is if they have a disease, let's say cancer, and they come along and there's something, something magical that I can do and I'll get rid of their cancer. But this is where the spiritual philosophy comes in about karma, about what you're meant to be learning, what the cancer has brought along for you to learn something. So I always say, when I say my prayer, I actually, over the patient, I always say for their highest good or whatever needs to be healed will be healed, whatever needs to be revealed will be revealed. Because it's not my judgment or even the patient's judgment as to what's meant to happen. And quite often, you'll have somebody being healed in a spiritual manner, as in they come to understand, they're full of love, forgiveness, understanding, but they still may die. So, you know, it's not always the physical body is repaired. The, the best, the most satisfying work that I get is, is the people who emotionally and mentally get healed. That is, a lot of depression, a lot of, you know, what it's all about. And so the healing seems to shift these blockages. And 
I get really excited when, when they've had a healing and then they say, I really want to learn more about what all this is all about, what is life all about, why am I here? And I know that person is then back on their path and going off to find out what it's all about. But they may have come to me with, um, you know, I get migraines or I'm depressed or whatever. So that's really just the little um, catalyst to bring them somewhere, whether it's to me or to anybody else, it's something brings them to somebody for them to say, I guess it's, you could call it enlightenment in a way, but that's what we're all wanting. We're all wanting enlightenment. And it could be the physical body is the catalyst to say, okay, you've got to learn something. And this is how you're going to learn it. And other people, it, it's relationships. You know, uh, I can't find the right person. Nobody loves me. Well, you know, we all think that at some stage, but they may come to me and then, and so when I, I may give them a hands-on healing or I may just talk to them. And even when I'm counseling, I may use tarot cards, I may use anything to counsel that person. I ask for whatever comes out of my mouth to be the right thing. So it's not my philosophy or my logic. It's, you know, I just say, okay, guys, you know, whatever needs to be said to this person will be said. And um, so that's where I need to step out of my ego and just let whatever knowledge or information needs to come through. So it doesn't always have to be a lay down on the couch, hands on healing. It could be just a one to one healing. The white light meditation is specifically beneficial for depression, anger, emotional stress. Um, I've used it on deep depression myself um, in conjunction with other treatments that people are, are having. But there's some remarkable stabilizing of the personality that occurs uh, with continued use of the light. It's evident after the first sitting because the person feels different. Oh God, I've had a weight lifted off my shoulder and that's quite a common remark and, and it's very, very akin to um, the significance of laying on the hands in the heat or the cold they feel or the static they feel in the reiki and the heat and the cold etc. So there is a notable difference and it has I think possibly um, that's where it's designed to work and activate because once you work on the emotional level everything else falls into place so at a, uh, the emotional level um, is besieged with light that's where it seems to center and um, uh, the depression lifts it aligns it aligns the, the balance within the body and it aligns the energy coming through the chakras because in some kinds of diseases, there's a malalignment of the energy coming through, for example, schizophrenia. Generally, the feedback that I get is good. You know, um, I may not have fixed their problem, but they've learnt so much and, and it's put them on a different path. Um, you know, they may have to go on to other therapists, um, whatever. So, you know, I'm a cog in a, in a big wheel and whatever needs to be learned. There, there are people that tell me that they feel great, um, you know, they're grateful and all this sort of stuff, which gives me a great buzz. I have to, you know, you, you feel enormous satisfaction that you've helped them. So there are people who physically get better um, and, and mentally and emotionally get better. Sometimes down the track, they might sort of have a little bit of a, a fall off the path, if you know what I mean, but they'll either come back to me or, or they'll keep going. I mean, it really takes us a lifetime to really heal ourselves in mind, body, spirit and emotion. That, that's what it's all about. With the spiritual healing technique that I use, I work on the cellular level of the body. I invoke the light into all of the systems of the body. And we have chakra points within the body that I think most people are familiar with anyway, who read New Age, are familiar with New Age tech, um, techniques. And these chakras are energy vortexes. Now, if, if one of these chakra areas, for example, the solar plexus that's concerned with emotions, if that area uh, has emotional turmoil, it throws it into a disturbance. It's not activating as it should. So above and below the solar plexus, there's going to be some um, aftermath. And with the white light energy, when you draw it in, you're actually aligning the chakra and you're balancing them. And that can be measured 
scientifically and physically. I mean, quite visually, with the pendulum. Mm. Yes, that's, that's when it goes up mm. and quiet. Yeah. I guess you want to talk about how some of them are anti-clockwise. Yes. Like well, crystal healers, a lot of crystal healers use um, the pendulum for measurements, and it's quite interesting because the pendulum uh, above the crown chakra for women goes in an anti-clockwise direction. For men, it goes in a clockwise direction. It's interesting because they're showing you the different polarities. And each chakra point below that will go in the opposite direction. Now, when I'm testing with my hands, I pick these things up with my hands, but I like to see myself uh, and test what I'm seeing and feeling. So I can pick up the energy field in the body and where the chakras, the energies are flowing through. And I can pick it up in all all of the, what we call the mind powers of the body, where we have our, um, probably autonomic systems, I guess. And when I test it with the pendulum, it confirms for me that I'm doing the right thing. Uh, there's no laying on of hands really necessary for some people, and sometimes I don't do that. Following um, a treatment, I'll use acupressure. I've never studied acupressure, but my guidance is Chinese, and um, he was a doctor and an alchemist and I just get him to guide me and people can feel the vibration now all that is doing is giving it an extra little purge so that it activates it's very similar to acupuncture but it's not as painful as acupuncture because I don't use much force but I will um, hit trigger spots which will be tender for the, the person being healed regardless of what the client tells me I use my own diagnostic techniques and I check the auric field and, and I get actually inside the body field to feel or sense uh, the pockets of energy and where there's any disturbance. I use, uh, if, it's a, if it's a serious kind of problem that these people are having, I use a pendulum to see where the energy flows are blocked. Um, I may use crystals but I tell the person what is going on and um, I give them a, a visualization or a sensing or a knowing uh, that their light energy is around their body and entering through the crown and the light flushes through the body and it's then withdrawn The, the client had sustained a quite a severe jolt in a car accident. Um, I actually knew, because she rang me and told me what had happened, she had a fracture to the shoulder blade. But the thing that I found in her auric field and within the body when I did the diagnosis was that there was a lot of shock and trauma um, in the solar plexus, the emotional field. that had to be released before that other thing could be healed, the physical body could be healed. Mm -hmm. And when I tested, I actually tested prior to um, the treatment and I used a technique that I, I've only used a couple of times and that was sort of a, a manipulation of the energy because I could feel it was not coming. So the person herself actually could feel physically something coming up and wanted to cough and I actually wanted to cough and somebody else in the room was coughing and because they were releasing it, coughing it up and getting it out of the system. So it, even though these problems or blockages can't be seen um, with physical eyes, you need a special equipment, uh, you actually feel it in the physical body. And it's not, she didn't suffer any pain she just suffered the sensation of something being coughed up. Um, after the treatment, um, she, we closed down the aura and the crown, so that, and we healed with the light the areas where the blockages were removed. And I tested uh, the energy fields again, there was a dramatic difference. Mm -hmm. And she said, I just feel so light, I just feel so clear. So this is one of the effects. It doesn't really matter how serious they are, unless they're unconscious, that you can't, you know, uh, get them to express their feelings. Um, I'd say 99.9% .9 of the cases, people have a dramatic 
effect of upliftment. Mm -hmm. It's an enlightened feeling. Now the white light energy has been used and tapped into uh, for thousands of years. Um, but my guides advised me, and they just said to me one night, take the light up. So in doing that, um, I've been able to really help people who are in probably depressed states, um, physical accidents, I haven't cured cancer. Um, with the light, I, I haven't cured AIDS, but I haven't treated that many anyway. But I get a lot of emotional disturbances and it's quite dramatic, the results. One of the most mysterious phenomena used by spiritual and psychic healers is the technique of psychic surgery, where healers are able to command blood, tissue and cysts to come out of whole bodies without cutting into the skin. Psychic surgery has been performed for many years and by a number of healers in the Philippines, where today it still remains very popular for chronic and incurable illnesses. Well, psychic surgery, I believe, goes back thousands of years. Um, the, the way that I became involved with it was in the Philippines. Around about um, in 1975, I went to the Philippines for a three-week holiday. And um, whilst I was over there, I had some very powerful psychic experiences where I felt that I was initiated by spirit in, into, um, into, into, the spirit, in, into the healer's circle, you might say. And, um, and just being by, by being surrounded by healers, that opened my mind up to the possibility of, that, of, of being able to do that. And, um, and in, the, in the Philippines, the healings have been around for at least, well, they know of, many hundreds of years. And it was used by the traditional native Filipino doctors. And it, it became popular after the Second World War when the American soldiers, a lot of American soldiers went to the Philippines and they were able to observe the healing taking place. And of course, word of the healings uh, went back to, to the States and it spread and lots of people started to come to the Philippines to um, receive psychic surgery. And there were wonderful results from the healing, fabulous results. But unfortunately, um, there, there became an element of jealousy within the medical profession in America and uh, they sent, then they started to send a lot of, lot of um, uh, video people over there to film to try and debunk the healing. So there was concerted effort by, by certain uh, areas of the medical establishment to basically debunk the healing. It's not like as if you're physically cutting somebody with, with a knife. No, it doesn't work like that. Basically, what I, how, how I work is I draw in energy through my crown chakra. I direct the energy through my body into my patient. And so it's actually the energy um, that is passing through my hands into the body. So in actual fact, my hands change vibration so that I can merge my hands with your body rather than actually make a cut. There is more of a, uh, this merging of, of energies. I look at it as being pure energy. I think that we are in fact, uh, that is what we are, is pure energy. And you can get energy from herbs or vitamins, um, many different sources. Um, but with the psychic surgery, you're actually connecting into the universal source of energy uh, using, using myself as, as a uh, medium for doing so. And I guess uh, you're not doing the actual healing, you're uh, initiating the healing. I'm facilitating the healing. I, n nobody can heal anybody else. What you can act, what, what you can do is help somebody to self-heal. So what I do by channeling the energy through my body and directing it to my patient, I'm helping them to self-heal by giving them the energy that they need to, to do that. But what I find is that most people get ill in the first place is because they become energy deficient, usually from um, blocks, emotional blocks, uh, inappropriate belief patterns and these manifest in the physical body as illness. So if they can absorb enough energy uh, into their body they can then make a shift in their own consciousness so that they're able to change the inappropriate belief into a more appropriate one or they can let go of the negativity that's in their body that is, is manifesting as an illness.
Another form of spiritual healing involves aura drawing. Aura drawings depict the colours relating to our emotional, physical, spiritual or psychological states and the energies which influence their functions. The drawing of the colours is like a focus for me of the information coming through. So, and the colours um, seem to, well, they indicate to me different aspects of the person's life and that could be past, present or future. So there's no actual good or bad colours, it's just energy coming through and it's just seeing where it is around the body and how it's being used at this time by that person. Mm -hmm. So it may um, tap in on things like creativity, how they could best um, express themselves creatively at this time. Um, it may indicate some sort of past trauma that um, the person went through which is, is actually stopping them now from going ahead. Um, it may indicate uh, there's a whole variety of things that, that can be seen in the aura and perceived in the aura through the colours. So there's past, there's the present well-being, how they're feeling, are they clear on what's happening, are they flowing with their energy. There's also spirit connection, you can sometimes see if someone close to that person has passed over. If they're close to them, do they want to connect with them, are they trying to communicate with them. Sometimes there's a guide around them that wants to talk to them, is trying to get through to help them to clarify their life in some way. Um, and all aspects, even health can, areas of tension can be um, cited in the body and then healing can can be done on those areas to, to bring it more into balance or the person can receive some guidance on who would be good for them to, to see, to get some help at this mm. stage if it's a health problem. I feel the colours come through, I don't feel like I visualise them, I feel like a colour comes through and I might actually see a colour or I might feel a colour it's just a different sense, perceiving and feeling, or I might hear the word red, red, there's a lot of red around the neck, the throat area is inflamed, what's happening, and usually with an area of tension then it goes into an emotional um, aspect of the person's life, so often, you know, if you're honing in on an area of tension, say the throat, we were doing a lot of work on Chris's throat, um, there has been a tendency for Chris not to speak her mind. She, she hasn't felt comfortable and able to really say what she wants to say. And so that can be seen in, in the aura. And so sometimes just bringing the person in touch with that, it's just a clarification. They might already know it, but having clarified, they, it, they get understanding about themselves. And when they understand themselves, they're able to move on. I conduct spiritual development workshops and in those workshops with the aid of my guides and the, the guidance of those who participate in the workshop we detect where our skills lie we uncover them and we find out that we have all these wonderful spiritual gifts we do healings the white light healing process doesn't have to be done one to one it can be projected telepathically and you just get the desire and the emotion going and you project it like a laser it has significant effects when you work in a group the energies are exponential so that the energies are magnified so strongly that people ring up and say were you doing healing on me last night I feel wonderful or I feel 100% better or my god I can put my foot to the ground I couldn't yesterday or something like that so it is very powerful, extremely powerful and we do, um, we get in touch telepathically uh, and we send out with the same emotions and, and, and the desire mechanism and, and we'll get flashes of the other one's face so we'll know that something's going on and if we, if somebody has a friend who's in dire need we'll, we'll call a gathering or we'll do it connect up um, by telephone usually and say, well, at this time we're going to sit down and merge our energies. Because once you make a connection, you induce the light. You're already tapped into a higher frequency. So you're getting more refinement 
in what's going on in the physical uh, and the intuitive fields. And you're actually exciting the atoms and the molecules with the light. Mm -hmm. So you're actually going into that huge source. The white light source has untapped potential. We can only, we can't even guess at what we can do, really, mm -hmm. with that energy, if we can just tap into the frequencies that are compatible with that. of protecting myself because if I open up to everybody's energies you know I'm just going to get sick um, very sensitive people I find are like that they're so open they're, they're taking in so much I mean they might be the psychics or the clairvoyants but you know they're not aware of how much energy that they're taking in so certainly anyone that wants to try um, any of this sort of work, meditation or chakra work or aura work, needs to realise they need to do a protection, first of all, and a closing down or a grounding of energy. A lot of people that get involved with spiritual work are very open spiritually in the spiritual centres and they stay open all the time. They're not grounded. I mean, I actually was doing this myself for a little while until I realised that I wasn't grounding myself. When I do my meditation, my guidance would say to me, Margaret, drink more water ground yourself more, you're coming out, you know, you're just spitting out up there. So um, I'm very lucky in that and when I go into meditation I'll, I'll sort of get told what to do. But um, it, it's easy to forget to protect yourself, to ground yourself, to sort of make sure that you're sort of closed down, well, not closed down but protected. Um, how, how do you ground yourself? Well, I bring that energy through the top of my head and I send it right down through the earth, through my feet. I also do work on my base chakra. You can actually ground yourself by simply going out onto the earth, out onto the ground, uh, walking on the ground. Um, I mean, I remember hearing a few years ago people talking about hugging a tree, and I used to think, oh, you know, that's really weird. But actually, about a tree, the roots are so grounded. So the energy of a tree is very grounded. The, the earth, the nature. So getting out into nature really grounds you. People that get out in their garden, to get rid of all this worry. They're grounding themselves and they're bringing all this worry energy down to the earth. Everybody believes in something, whether they admit it or not, even if they may just believe in themselves or their mother. And they don't have to see. They don't have to be creatively visual. There is a sense that they have that will pick it up. And by explaining that you're using a creative visualization or a sensing or knowing that something's going on, that it will relax them and you're going to give them step-by-step -step instructions, that they're quite happy with that. Um, I do, um, I have uh, icons in my home, I have crystals in my home, I have Buddhas in my home, and so whoever comes in doesn't feel threatened. And I have those because I've picked them up and uh, wanted them in my home. But it has proved quite good because people have said, oh, I looked around and I thought, oh, there's a picture of Jesus, that's okay. Mm -hmm. So they feel comfortable. And they've got to trust what you're doing, even though they might be thinking, oh, this is a load of hogwash. Um, they've got to sort of say, well, I'll go along with it. Mm -hmm. And even if they resist, it's quite interesting. You can actually see... Um, the light energy working, well spiritualists can see it anyway, but there are some visible techniques that people trying it at home can do, and that is uh, to watch the rapid eye movements. Once the light goes in through the crown, mm -hmm. that's it. They start to rim straight away. I mean there may be people that find it hard to believe, um, which we, everybody's, everybody's entitled to have their own belief about the psychic surgery but the thing is for a lot of people it has worked and I think that something that has worked um, and and has proved to be successful for people that have tried every other um, modality of healing it may not just be I'm not just talking about um, uh, normal West, Western medicine but they may have tried chiropractic work acupuncture they may have tried all kinds of different alternate therapies and nothing has seemed to work so they seek out uh, a spiritual healer or a psychic surgeon and that the the, the healing is successful so for, for in, in my mind to take something away from from people like that is a crime 
I mean, I don't think people should be allowed to, just because they don't believe in it, say that nobody else can believe in it either. I think um, if, if it is helping people and it's not hurting anybody, then why take it away, you know, because you, because you don't believe in it. The idea of spiritual healing, um, I don't think it has really any conflict um, with the medical profession. I guess when you start using things like crystals and things that they don't believe in, that's when you get into difficulties. But often medical practitioners will recommend that people have um, stress uh, relieving meditations. And the white light meditation is a very stress relieving meditation. So they actually prescribe at times to their patients to go and have these other types of therapy. There are some uh, medical professionals I know who are very into this. Um, but generally speaking, this sort of thing isn't accepted by the community. They'll say, oh, ha <laughs> Well, traditional medicine is uh, very mechanical. Um, and they don't look for any reason behind it. Oh, you know, the reasons might have been you've got a bug um, or it's genetic. See, I believe genetic is karmic. There's a very strong family karma um, and, you know, all they want to do is, is give you something to either mask the illness or, you know, whatever. Whereas spiritual healing, it's not painful, but it's not, I'll give, I don't take the responsibility, I, the responsibility is the patient's and I'll give them as much loving, understanding, caring to help them see what it is that they're meant to be seeing. And sometimes you don't want to see something about yourself. Um, so it, it's just, uh, I guess the difference is that it's, it's very... The aim is for the person to love themselves, to realise that they're, within them is this perfection. And it's just, it's the personality and the ego and the physical body which might be a bit of a, you know, bummer. Mm -hmm. But to understand and forgive and accept ourselves, um, even if we're, you know, too fat or get headaches or whatever, maybe we're not nurturing and loving ourselves. Perhaps we're, you know, we get stuck into chockies, chocolate, and that's giving us headaches. But, you know, I could easily say, well, don't eat the chocolate and, and take this, even this herb. But you've got to go right back to, you know, why are you eating, overeating? That's a sign of nurturing and... And so it goes on and on and on. But I usually recommend that people do something like meditation. It needs to be ongoing. 